So I, uh, I want to start out by saying that uh, thank you to Bill, who's not even in the room, for inviting me to come and talk here. I gave a talk at B-Sides Cleveland last year called Breaking Out of the Impo Sec Chamber, or Breaking Out of the Echo Chamber. There's a big problem that a lot of people in InfoSec have where we do a lot of talking to each other and we forget to talk to everybody else. Some of it's time management. You know, we're so busy involved in our own projects that we forget to engage. And how come my thing's not showing up on there? You're not getting my slides. So is your, uh, is your display extended or? Yeah, well. Should have checked that before I started. Why did you stop her? <laughs> I didn't know to stop her. Did you do it? All right, so I gave a talk at B-Sides Cleveland last year, and Bill said it was one of his favorite talks from the conference. And a few months ago, uh, Bill contacted me and said that there's this conference down here, A, and would I like to come down and talk? I'm like, well, do you want me to submit a, you know, have a CFP? He goes, sure, whatever you want to talk about, you know, we'd be happy to have you down here. What I really wanted to do, though, is part of that whole concept that we talk too much to our, each other the fact that we need to give back and talk to the community at large, talk to students, talk to others. Is there are already organizations in place to help solve some of this issue? Um, one of which is CCDC. So I wanted, to, when I told Bill that I want to talk about CCDC, he said that's great because they would love to have a CCDC team here at Marshall, and it's one of the things he's really been pushing for. So the question then is, CCDC, what is it? Why does it exist? And where can we go from here? So. I start up by saying, you know, here's my obligatory, who the hell am I slide. Um, my name is James Siegel. Um, I've been doing various stuff with computers, some of it nice and some of it not so nice, uh, since I was 13 or 14 years old, which is um, unfortunately three decades. Georgia says I should be looking at an old folks home. Um, I was a CCDC competitor. I recently went back to school uh, at Ivy Tech in Fort Wayne. And I competed for three years on CCDC. My current job, I'm a systems administrator in a purely Linux environment, thank God for that, um, for a company called Medical Informatics Engineering. I want to start by saying everything I say here is mine. It has nothing to do with them. I'm not going to talk about their business practices. I'm not, so I want to make sure we understand that. Um, I do have a few alphabets after my name. I don't want a final slide. Um, I am a consultant also in, small, in the small town that I live in because I think that we need to engage the public. There's already been some discussion here, some of the other talks, about dealing with small businesses. Um, if we can change people's behaviors at home, if we can change people's behaviors in small businesses, that will go back upstream to big corporations. I think until we as an industry understand that we're all interoperating, that um, we're not going to fix some of it. And of course, with this talk, I'm an aspiring professor, professional and evangelist, recently hired as George's assistant at Bulk Security. Yay, Paul. It's a picture of my most recent team. Um, only two members of the team are still going to be with, with the team. The rest of us have all volunteered to continue mentoring, which is part of what this talk is going to be about, about the fact that um, I'm the only one not wearing black. You know, like that? I'm wearing black today. Just in, so CCDC, the student and industry, that's what this talk is going to be about. I'm going to try and visit these topics. And the one that's most central here, you notice it's in the middle, is the student. And that's where CCDC is really, um, at its core, is most important. The student is the central part of CCDC. So I want to start by talking about problems that we have in the existing educational system. I don't want to point fingers at universities. I don't want to point fingers at teachers. I don't want to point will. I'm saying, I don't, I don't want to say this instructor here at this school is doing it wrong. What I want to talk about is the fact that we do have a problem in our educational system. For a long time, we've been teaching kids to take a test, not to actually learn anything. Um, when a student has questions, when a small kid asks a question, Daddy, why is the sky blue? 
we're not really answering. We're just, just blue. We're not explaining to them. Some of them three years old, maybe not going to understand. But even when they get older, what's the internet? How does it work? As an adult, I write an email. Where did it go? What happened to it? You know, there's there's simple fundamental questions that consumers have, that users have, that aren't being answered by anybody in any of the IT industry, that leave them vulnerable to situations that were addressed earlier in the discussions about user awareness and, and having security awareness training in their companies. So we're not addressing the real questions. We're leaving them to blindly try and figure it out for themselves. And with school, what we're doing, like I said, is we're teaching students, by and large, in our educational system, to take a test. They're not learning how to do something. They're learning how to answer question A, because that's what the teacher wants them to learn how to say. So when they take the test, they get a 100% on the test. They didn't learn any fundamentals. They weren't taught to creatively think for themselves. They weren't taught to, taught to solve a problem or find out how to solve a problem. I mean, we tell people there's an answer out there, just Google it. Half of them don't want to Google it. They just want to, the teachers want them to just memorize it. Why is Google not an accepted use for, for students in schools? Why are those kind of tools not available? Because in a large case, I live in Indiana, we have a test called ISTEP. The students take it twice a year. It's roughly a two week long process to take the test, and primarily a month before the test is taken, they study for that test. So in the fall, they study for about a month to take the test. It takes about two months to do the whole testing process. Then in the spring, they redo it again. To me, as a taxpayer, we just lost two months of educational potential with those students. They didn't really learn anything, they were just memorizing the stuff they needed to take the test. And I think that's a big failure in the educational system. So, what CCDC does. Um, I'll give you an example. When I take in my college class, it's usually the professor will say, you know, you're going to be in class for three hours. Outside of the class, you're probably going to be expected to put in another two hours, four hours, six hours of work on your own time, whether it's writing papers, doing research, or whatever. So you're really going to spend eight to ten hours a week on that class. What you find with CCDC students, people who have been on teams, is that that three-hour class isn't enough. The six hours that the professor recommends is enough. These are people who willingly go out of their way to find the answers. They want to know. They're passionate about learning. Um, it's not uncommon for some of those students to put in a 30, 40, 50, 60 hour week in addition to their schoolwork because they have a passion for learning. And learning on their own far surpasses what they're learning in the classroom. Here's some of the comments from some of the people I've been involved with. So I want to start out by this part by talking about the fact that, uh, among other things, I'm a ISSA member, Information Systems Security Association. I'm on the board of my local chapter. And the president of the current president of the ISSA, um, Ira Winkler, recently made a statement in an interview that taking a class in network security I'm bringing out my notes because I don't want to mess this up. Taking a class in network security is at most 45 hours of contact with a teacher over the course of a 16-week class, roughly three hours a week, 45 hours of contact with a teacher. That is a week of professional on-the-job work. That course does not have the applicability of even a week of training in an official environment or an office environment doing the work. So as an employer, when an employer is looking to hire somebody, they're going... I need somebody who has experience with this. I need somebody who has experience with that. We heard a comment earlier on one of the other talks about the fact that there are classes, environments, Brian, that when he goes to hire somebody, if he's going to hire somebody who just went out of school that maybe learned on Microsoft that he's in a, in a Linux environment, or maybe learned to use X product that he uses Y product, but that guy over there didn't go to that school and does have experience with that product, which one is he as a responsible business owner going to hire? He's going to hire the one that has experience with the product because that's what he needs. He needs the experience with that product. It's not to say that schools can afford to have a Linux environment as well as a Microsoft environment as well as a, as a Macintosh environment. Due to budget constraints and environments that the teachers are comfortable with, they end up using whatever the school's license to use, whatever they're most proficient in. But again, that training doesn't give them the necessary education that they need to go from school and transition from being a graduate to an employee. Ira Winkler said, you learn in the trenches. So as an employer, the employer is saying, 
I need people with X type of experience. So you come and do the job interview, and a college graduate, which you need that degree, that's what gets you past HR. But when you come and do that interview, you're basically asked to justify why they should hire you. And the degree is fine. But like this IKEA slide, tell the, it tells the this is from IKEA, make a chair and take a seat. <laughs> Can you put the chair together? That's the justification. Don't give me your don't give me your degree. Don't show me a fancy slip of paper. Your resume and your degree were fine. Prove to me that you can do what you say you can do. And the interview process can, in some cases, hour, two hours. You don't have a lot of time to do all that. So you need the ability to provide more rounded proof that you've done stuff, that you have applicable experience. Now, when you're doing a resume, this can be very important. I mean, you can justify that your hobbies provided you experience. You know, maybe you built servers in your spare time. Maybe you're, ev everybody in your neighborhood, maybe you're their IT guy. Fine. Document it, prove it, have a way to, to verify it. <laughs> so you go to school, and historically, primarily in the business environment, we've had this discussion over decades that when you go to fill out your resume, there are other things you can do to prove validity to an employer. You're involved in extracurricular activities. You're a football player. So you're a team player. You're the team captain, okay, so you can lead others. You were in drama, so maybe um, you'd be great at customer service. You're used to dealing with other people. So you've been able, historically, to justify your extracurricular activities to the job market to some degree. It's a little harder in the IT field, especially in InfoSec. What did you do? Can you show me? Can you prove it? You know, if I ask you some key questions, what kind of stuff are you going to feed me back? If it's just the path that you learned in your textbook, it may not have enough value. You're much more, like I said, the degree gets you past HR. What you've done in your own spare time may be what gets you the job. So then that brings us to CCDC. So how does a student bridge that gap? Excluding the already existing extracurricular activities, football, basketball, arts, drama, so how does a student go and say, okay, but I want to have a job in information security. I want to be a systems administrator. I want to be a penetration tester. Whatever the case may be, how do they get that experience while they're at school? And so the other reason why I have a piece of paper up here, I don't want to get this wrong. This is just some comments, but this is their quote from their website, National CCDC website. The mission of the CCDC is to provide institutions a controlled, competitive environment to assess a student's depth of understanding and operational, comp operational competency in managing the challenges inherent in protecting a corporate network, network infrastructure and business information systems. It's a really long statement, but there were some really key points that were in there that have some true validity. And those were depth of understanding and operational competency. So it wasn't just stuff you learned from a textbook. It wasn't a test you took that said, okay, I understand TCP IP. I understand NAT. I understand um, the principles of Security Plus. No. It was demonstrating that you can use those fundamentals that you learned from the textbook and put them into operation. And it's a key factor in CCDC, you're given a mal-constructed and deliberately compromised network. So as a team, you're not walking into a computer that works. It may appear to work, but it's mal-configured. User settings are wrong. File permission settings are wrong. There's already a back door sent to the system. So you not only have to worry about configuring all that, hardening it, finding it, doing some simple forensic analysis on the machine to find out what was done to it, but there's an active red team that's trying to break into that network and keep you from doing that. Oh, and at the same time, the white team, the judges are coming and giving you assignments like install this software package. You've got 45 minutes. Come back to us with a report that it's done. Set up these users. Or that user was fired, take them out. So you're getting hit with what they call business injects. At the same time, you're already trying to find out what was done to these systems before you even got there. And there's a red team actively trying to stop you from doing it. It's a competitive environment. Um, this year, my team, we had a guy, after four hours, just walk out. He couldn't handle it anymore. 
um, my first year in competition, at the end of the day, I went home, I got home after the dinner, got home around 10 o'clock, I slept until 2 o'clock the next afternoon. I was that emotionally drained from the competition. They made Georgia cry. Beautiful uh -huh. cry, Georgia. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, in one of the competitions, they made Georgia cry. No? Okay. So, as a college student looking to potentially compete in the CCDC competition, what are the kinds of things that the job market is looking for and what are the, some of the benefits that you might get from it? This is an actual job listing. All these job listings I'm going to show, I'm going to show like four or five of them. These are very recent. Dice.com, Monster.com, um, network support, um, backups, account creation, software updates, um, monitoring spam system, monitoring spam settings, monitoring internet traffic. Uh, the next one has some interesting things on here. This is entry level. Remember entry level. Uh, Linux. Entry level scripting and programming knowledge. Comment was made yesterday in Concealed's talk and um, pretty cute your name. Okay. I'm trying to remember your first name. But that scripting is very important. I'm a systems administrator and scripting is a very big part of my job. I never thought that as an administrator I would have to worry about scripting. Well, the simple rule of thumb is when you do something on one machine, it's okay, you do something on two machines, uh, you start doing it on three or four machines and you should be doing the same steps. You better written a script or a program to handle it because you're going to get really tired of doing the same steps over and over and over again. Programming and scripting is very, very important. Uh, a lot of schools are strictly Windows, both high school and college. They're mostly strictly Windows environments, just the way things are. A lot of students are on, on, on Macintoshes. Uh, in the big organizations, big companies, you're probably going to use a lot of Linux. Uh, in InfoSec, you're going to use a lot of Linux. So it really behooves you to try and become as well-rounded as you can. Um, this one, troubleshooting network issues, basic knowledge and information security principles, um, implementing and maintaining intrusion detection systems, firewalls, not the typical stuff you get in a regular computing class. And if you do, it's a lot of book and textbook stuff that's not actually having you physically do it. You have to go out and get involved in doing that stuff for yourself. Being on a team that does it actively and then shows it proves that they can defend a network or at least try to defend a network um, is a great job experience. Uh, this one, we're going to talk about Windows and Linux, routers and switches, understanding load balancing technologies, uh, understanding routing protocols and using a VPN, working independently in a dynamic environment with minimal uh, so again, I have another one here. Talks about some of the same stuff. Um, software scripting languages, Perl, Bash, and Windows Shell. Um, again, backups. Uh, experience in Linux environments. Um, local area network device support. So when the candidate comes out of college, now I'm going to step from talking to the student, I'm going to start talking to the employers, to the potential employers. Just some employers who are looking for college graduates to come out of school. They're looking for certain requirements. I showed some of them. So how do they justify them? It's very hard in some cases. You have something on a resume. How do you get an employee to really prove that they've done it? CCDC ends up lending some credence to that. There's some real feedback. If a company just says, hey, go find me 10 employees. And they put out a listing and they say, hey, and so they get, they don't get 10 employees, they get two or 300 resumes, and then they gotta sort through them. The good thing about CCDC is that when there's a competition, all of the competitors submit their resume. As a potential employer who's dealing with the CCDC team or gets involved as a sponsor or in some other way in an ancillary form, gets involved with CCDC, they have access to those resumes of those proven students who weren't just one of 30 in a classroom, who weren't just one of 500 at a university. They were one of eight on a team that went and actually did it, either at the state level, the regional level, or right now, the national competition started in, in San Antonio. Uh, the team that beat us, Rose Holman, 
went to regionals and won regionals and they're competing and I have a lot of respect for Sean and the stuff that they've done with their team. So as an employer, potential employers out here, it gives you the ability to know that the people that you're potentially looking at have in some way proven themselves. Yes, they're college graduates, but they're not your average college graduate. Like I said, they're the ones who didn't spend the 45 hours in a classroom over a semester. They're not the ones who put in two or three hours a week in extra. They're the ones who spent 50, 60, 70 hours going out of their way to go beyond the knowledge they were getting in their classroom. To those of you in the industry that are penetration testers or work with penetration testers, do you have a question? Or just raise your hand. Um, to those of you who are involved in red team work, <laughs> uh, I would encourage you to get involved as well. Being on a red team is an incredible experience. Number one, you're helping improve the, the future <coughs> systems administrators, number two administrators going forward. And it allows you to have something on your resume. I competed as a red team member at XYZ CCDC competition. Yeah, Brian? Most red team guys shouldn't be around students for longer than a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually isolated. They're weird <laughs> no, but okay. There's, there is this. Um, we'll call it a, dance it. We'll call it a skewed perspective. A, a, a skewed perspective. But I don't. I don't think that the red team member should necessarily be involved with the students. That, that's not my point. When you're competing in basketball, baseball, football, whatever, you don't want to compete against somebody you beat all the time. When you have a rival, like I guess Marshall University. West Virginia are really big rivals. <laughs> when you have a rival, you want that rival to be the best they can be. You don't want that rival to be somebody you beat all the time. And the reason is because you want the best competition you can get because that makes you better. You don't get better by competing against somebody who has no idea what they're doing. You get better by competing against somebody who does. It forces you to step up your game. So as a former competitor, I would love to see more red team people get involved and make the competition better, make it stronger. Challenge them. As an educator, reaching up to educators, I hope that we understand that just having students be involved in everyday classroom activity is fine. But if you want to get involved in CCDC, this isn't something that's just given to students. This isn't something where the student's going to be expected to just, oh, I can do that and get by. It's going to be a challenge to the students. But you want, if I don't, you didn't learn anything else. It's the fact that students <coughs> love to be challenged. The ones who would get involved in the CCDC team are the ones who really want to learn. They're going to go that extra mile, and they want every single challenge they can get. So if you're an educator thinking about starting a team, if you're a student thinking about being on a team, if you're a penetration tester thinking about being involved, understand that these are the type of people who really want to be, in check, be challenged. And I would argue to say that everybody in this room, and most of the people who will be watching, are exactly those type of individuals anyway. Or you wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be interested in learning. You wouldn't be interested in going further. So going forward, and this is my, I gave a talk about Besides Cleveland, about reaching back to the community. This is my put up or shut up part of it. If you're going to be involved in the industry and you want to just do your 9 to 5, you just want to deal with your clients and that's all you want to do, that's fine. But I hope if you're a penetration tester or an educator or somebody who's a former competitor or somebody who has experience in the industry but has never been involved with a group of students before, mentor them. Sponsor them. Get involved in dealing with some of the CCDC competitions. There's some great companies that do. Um, Deloitte, Zynga, Facebook, Microsoft, Diebold, um, there's tons of them that have sponsored CCDC and gotten involved. They have access to those resumes, that's one great thing for companies, but they're helping drive it forward. They're helping educate the next generation of system and network professionals. It's our responsibility as people who are already in the industry to make sure that that goes forward. If we're really serious about security, then we have to make sure we educate as many people as we can, and that includes the next generation, the generation going forward, or we haven't done our job. Encourage them. 
If you know somebody who's involved in InfoSec or is passionate about learning, encourage them to go further. Encourage them to, well, what else do you want to learn? What else can we help you? What else can I help you learn? People like Greg just made a comment. If you want to know something, reach out to him. He'll help you find, if he doesn't know the answer, he'll help you find the person that does. And most of the people in this community, not all, but most of the people in the community would go that extra mile to help you find the answer that you're really looking for. The ones that have been up here speaking and speak at other conferences, for the most part, they're passionate about helping somebody else go that extra mile to take that next step. And if you're an employer and you find people who are that passionate about learning that they go beyond whatever would be required of them to get their degree, they're not just getting a passing grade. I mean, there's the old joke, what do you call the guy who graduated last in law school? What do you call the guy who graduated last in medical school? Lawyer and doctor. They may have got the passing grades, they may have the degree, but when you want to have brain surgery, you don't want the guy that got C's in his class, you want to find the guy that got A's, and unfortunately the degree doesn't show you that. Hire them. You find somebody who's that passionate, do whatever it takes to encourage that. One of the things I've noticed about the industry, like especially with ours, is while the legal system and the medical system tend to have issues that they cover up to protect members, so that you may have had the lowest grade, you may be the one that's making mistakes, but you still get to keep on practicing. This one tends to be a little more self-correcting. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it does. I would say that there's still I would say that there's still some people in the industry that are getting away with some stuff that they probably shouldn't have. A couple of names came up at dinner last night. <laughs> Was he here today? I don't know. <laughs> so, but if you're in the industry or you want to be involved in the industry, even in an ancillary fashion. My evangelical part of it is put up or shut up. It's our responsibility to not just educate our users, but to educate those students going forward, the ones who are going to replace us. And I don't mean take your job away right now, but hopefully at some point when you're ready to retire, you would hope that somebody is running the networks and the systems that are protecting your kids' data, your grandkids' data. You don't want to be defended by anybody who's doing less than what you would do. Right. And you would hope that they were doing more. So, put up or shut up. My talk wasn't that long, mostly evangelical in nature. I mean, if you're thinking about starting a team, if you're thinking about joining a team, if you're thinking about being involved with it either as a sponsor or looking at how do I get involved in helping some of these students. If you're thinking about getting involved and in saying, I want to give, as a penetration tester, I want to be on a red team, and I want to give the students a challenge. There's not just CCDC, um, they've branched out, and there's now programs at the high school level too, um, Cyber Patriot and a couple others. Um, there are people out there who are really passionate about these topics, and really passionate about learning, and I think it's our responsibility to do what we can to provide that education. Does it take a few more hours out of your week to help a college kid, to help a couple high school kids? Maybe. I say it's an investment well worth your time. My contact information um, added on here recently was my bulbsecurity.com email address at Dave Bulb. Um, like many others, uh, that's my Twitter handle, and I don't turn down tweets. I answer them pretty quickly whenever I can. Um, my website's up there. Um, it has a couple of the other events and a couple of other talks that I've done on it. And that the other email address, um, excluding the Bulb Security one, is. Um, and I have this on my business card too. That's my personal email address. I have an email address at work, my day job. I have an email address at school. I have an email address um, uh, at Gmail. Those I check when I get to them. This one goes to me every single day. That's my home email. I check all the time. So if an email goes to that email, and I have no filters on that email. So you send me something, I'm probably going to see it. I don't drop it like I do some other emails. He doesn't Please. check his bulb security email ever. I do too check my bulb security email. <laughs> you just said you didn't check that one. I don't check it as often as I check this the other one. No wonder my students are so unhappy. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I know that Bill really wants to start the CCUC team here at Marshall. We do. A second one? Second. A second. At this point, yeah. Are you guys aware of what's the an equivalent like for <laughs> private industry, like it, it would be neat to have a CCDC type thing for growing people that are 
in the infosec biz than in the college. I don't know that there is. You play capture the flag. At there's, there's, a lot of the, thing, right? there's a lot of capture the flag competitions. And sure. What really differs CCDC from the capture the flag competition is it's designed to show the students how to be purely defensive in nature. Yeah. Now, I would argue that you can't be purely defensive in nature, and this is what I go back and forth with my team on, and why we try and do some red team, blue team exercises inside ourselves. You can't be a good defender until you understand what the bad guys are doing. You can't be a good bad guy or a good red team member if you don't understand the blue team technologies that are out there. It is actually very irresponsible for somebody to think that they're a really good penetration tester and not do some work with a blue team at some point because you don't really know what the defenders are doing. So, what's a firewall? <laughs> but I can go in core. We're talking professional development and personal development. The local hacking teams we have are an invaluable source. We run, I run 610 hackers today. So everybody shows up on Friday and we go through something and we do things with sites and we have a lot of fun and we learn red team, blue team, mostly red team, okay, all red team. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that's available all the time as opposed to when CDC shows up. Right. The, the difference is, um, speaking for someone who dealt with some of the people that are, have dealt with the military and the government, when you go to apply for somebody like, um, one of the three letter agencies, or the military, or the State Department. Sometimes they don't like dealing with that stuff that you did in the yeah. basement. Yeah. CCDC gives some of that credibility that some of that I basement stuff does basement. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's either the basement, it's either the basement or the, the, uh, the empty warehouse. It's the big empty warehouse. The big empty warehouse. <laughs> Uh, I am honored the fact that we had at least one law enforcement But you'll also learn things in those places that you won't learn in the CCDC. That's, that's true. Yeah. And I encourage people who are on CCDC teams to go and reach out to those organizations because it's the only way you're going to learn. You but like I said, all the things. you have to do all the things. Hack all the things. Oh, God. Don't get him started. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am honored that we had at least one law, law enforcement official here. Two. Uh, two. Um, that we've had some uh, people from the school. Um, some students who may be interested, and of course the people who are already in the industry. Because I think it's only through a collaboration of all of us that we can move forward. Nothing else? Thank you very much. Thank you.